Oh, it sounds so good. <laughs> you know, for me, it's like um, shopping in your own house. <laughs> How you mean? You know, like just hearing that bass line by itself, it, it has a personality. I mean, it definitely has a personality within the track. But when you just isolate it and let it, it's like, oh, wow, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's interesting. But also, you get to have a closer, intimate connection when you solo the track. Mm-hmm. And you're, I, you're, you're, you're summing up exactly why we wanted to make a show like this. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. This is the show Isolated Tracks. I'm Julian Martlew, and our guest today is the legendary DJ, producer, artist, the tone of the Twilight Zone, the Twilight Tone. We're talking about the song Do It Properly from the record The Clearing out on Stone's Throw Records. Uh, He's from the city of icons, Chicago, and he's worked with No ID. Common, Gorillaz, Kendrick Lamar, Pusha T, Kanye, Big Sean, John Legend. Uh, please welcome Twilight Tone. All right, how are you feeling, Tone? I feel great, actually. I'm, 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 I feel really good. Well, how are you? I'm feeling fantastic, too. I'm very excited to talk about the song. Nice. And uh, I think maybe the easiest way to do this is to to ask you, first of all, when you start to make a piece of music, what's what's the first thing that you do? Oftentimes I come into a room and I'm like, I might start listening to records. And then either I'll find something that I want to manipulate or uh, massage. Others might say uh, they want to chop up the sample. <laughs> But they want to sample and then they may want to chop it up and then see what new they what 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 could they do with that sample that's new a lot of times I, that's pretty much my mo i really like uh chopping up stuff and representing things you hear people ask you things because you're in music oh what's your favorite song <laughs> uh-huh. what's your favorite raindrop what's your favorite snowflake uh huh. For me, it's not even songs. I don't quantify songs, songwriters, singers, artists holistically like that. I don't like, oh, this guy is my, you know, it, it's literally I can hit a chord or two notes or whatever or a note in a, and fall and hit the, another note right after it. And at that moment, that's my favorite everything. So the chords, I'm feeling the chords, I'm feeling the notes. And sometimes that's where a track will start with me playing. Um, And then I'll start adding drums and then adding other instrumentation. We'll do it properly. It started with the chopping up of those drums. I really like those sounds. And it was very... At first, it could have very well been fundamentally "quote unquote" boom bap, boom boom cap, boom 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 cap. I mean, that's like that's like '90s hip hop 101. There's so many songs that's boom boom cap, boom 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 cap. So now I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put on my headphones so I don't it doesn't feel bad. It was just, I just took some drums from the record. And, um, but then I started messing with the filters of it, manipulating the filters so that it would have a certain attack. And I had it, it started to become this different thing. It started not to sound like boom bap. It started to sound spacier, more celestial, more, it had more of a bite. Um, And then that inspired me to go uh, 
modulator, arpeggiator style bass line. Okay. Because I thought, okay, I got these drums. It's kind of like space, kind of like space, uh, um, like rock, rocky, or, you know, like trippy drums. Let me go moogie, arpeggiated bass line, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and that's why it just inspired me to do like a, like a running baseline, like moving running baseline. So, and that, honestly, that I have been doing that. That's just like kind of my mo, especially with this these tempos, these lower tempos. I felt like this would be so interesting to mix this thing from up tempo dance music with these mid tempo or down tempo approaches. Mm-hmm. Well, let's uh, let's listen to the bass line. I mean, this is one okay. of the best things about this song, and it's so complex. So yeah, I'm basically twisting knobs, and what that does it allows for it not to just be a loop. It is it's more expressive. So uh, I know, like, I, I don't want to take too much time, but I do want to ask you some t- slightly more technical questions. Of course. So the first thing is, you have these monster bass sounds mm-hmm. that are getting, they seem like they're deeper than it's possible for things to be deep. Mm-hmm. How are you doing it? Like, what are you doing so I use, I, I haven't, I haven't given, I haven't let people know what my secret bass sound is. I think I told ah. you guys last week, <laughs> but I'm using, basically I'm using like a Moog thing, like a uh-huh. Moog module, like a Moog-like module. It's not Moog. But also I do a lot of uh, transposing. So I might play something at one level, but then I'll go into NPC and I'll transpose it down or up. And that brings a certain crunch and a certain weight. And sometimes, uh, yeah, I'll do, yeah, I do that a lot, just pardon me. Um, it brings a weight to the bass lines. It gets it under, it gets deeper. <laughs> and it's like it brings a vibration to the baseline a cr- and a crunch sometimes. But just to answer your question, like a lot of times it's either the way I'm playing it, the manipulation of the envelopes, and then in conjunction with uh, transposing. Yeah, it's I mean, it's it's nice when it hits that low, low, low. It's really, really, really huge. So the, one of the things that I like about um, how I approach electronic instruments, a lot of times people are like, um, first of all, all, all instruments that is dealing with electricity is electric. Yeah, but the point is, you know, a lot of times, you know, when you, certain musicians, you, you, you start talking about like either uh, synthesizers or technology, it's like, oh, you lose the emotion or the soul, or and I I disagree with that. It's a lot of even like some people is, is supposedly the way they perform is super cold, like craftwork, um, but it's soul in that, mm-hmm. and it's proof positive because of it being the such a intricate part of either so called hip hop or so called you know of dance music. And I mean uh, the fact. The fact that you're playing it, that you're change, you're twisting knobs in the moment, that you're reacting to the change that you hear, means that that baseline is not, it's not your standard loop that's that somebody just downloaded off of a, a loop site and dropped in, and it just does the same thing, does the same thing, and the only variety then that ever happens is when you just take segments out of it, right, or you mute it. And you bring it back. 
Yeah, and 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 again, sometimes I might play it. You know, I might play different notes or play it differently, but this is something that I really have uh, been attracted to. I re I really like. That's one of the things that you'll notice that I'm opening mm -hmm. and closing envelopes a lot with with sounds. Mm -hmm. And like just something simple like that brings a certain tone and texture and emotion to uh, the music. Yeah. And, and you kind of just, so you have the beat going and you're playing the bass line and you're recording it. Yeah. So I use, so I use the MPC, like you might use Pro Tools or Logic or Studio One or Ableton. Like, you know, and a lot of people say, oh, that's primitive. But no, I'm doing it. Literally, I'm doing the same thing that people are doing in Pro Tools. I just may not be able to see it the way you can see it in Logic, which is what's been attracting me to like Logic and um, even a new MPC software, which is a DAW now. And I realized it, it, it hit me like a light bulb. I was like, oh, this is like when we used to do pause edits with cassettes. This is like, we used to make edits and keep stuff going with the cassette. Uh -huh. And I'm like, I realize I'm just doing it in an easier way, <laughs> but it's the same, it's kind of the same philosophy. Uh -huh. So it is keeping the record going. Sampling is just an easier way of keeping the record going. So after I create the baseline, and a lot of times the baseline is, is recorded into the MPC on a eight bar, four bars, seven bar, whatever sequence. And it's just looping. And I might just, as it's going through the song, three minutes, five minutes, I'm changing it as it goes live. That song just started opening up. I started just adding <laughs> more instruments. And I didn't stop adding instruments till I was like, there's enough instruments. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and that's a distorted lead. Uh huh. And then we have a, these guys that I think really help to bring that uh, otherworldly kind of uh, something important happening feeling. <laughs> yeah. So that happens throughout the song, just periodically. And again, it says something different when it, they're by itself. When they all together, it's like, whoa, mainstream, play the mainstream. It's like the chorus. Mm -hmm. So, and then I'll go into okay, next. So my favorite sound, maybe I should play my favorite sound. Mm -hmm. My favorite sound in the, um, and I think, I really like these sounds. I mean, maybe they're not my favorite, but I, I really like these sounds. And that's the lead guitar and the lead guitar um, accent. <laughs> this is like, yeah, really quick, it comes in. And they're quirky and are you uh are you pitch bending them or is it part of the patch? sometimes i do sometimes i've i've, I've been i've been just a little mm -hmm. little little give it a little english um <laughs> and well, let me see if i could find the other baseline parts
Um, but there's a main part, there's a bridge, there's a sort of transition break, and then there's the outro. And the main part uh, is very reminiscent of, it's like a more dreamy, if you can get more dreamy than, that, than it already is, human nature. I didn't purposely say, oh, I want to do my version of human nature, but that's what it, that I, after I, I was like, yeah, this is like human nature. And then later when the album came out, years later, people were referring and uh, comparing it to uh, Lawrence Professor's production of It Ain't Hard to Tell by Nas, which I thought was, I was flattered I think, uh, sidebar, I just think it's interesting. You know, I've been doing this a long, you know, I've been doing this a while. And, you know, I was doing it when the music was for only the people in the culture. Like hip hop was for hip hoppers and dance music was for dancers. It wasn't for the office guy who, it wasn't for, you know, in your cubicle it wasn't for you know when you drive through a starbucks it's like no i live this life right so right. i just want i just want to give a, a disclaimer to the audience members or the community members who are so quick <clears throat> to think someone is either copying or biting something that came before them or that they're biting. This is like this negative connotation. Uh, in our culture, meaning indigenous original people that some might call like Egyptians or the Kemetic, in our culture, we, we what we did was we brought things as far as we could do it. And then we left it behind so the next genera generation can take it to the next stage of evolution. And it keeps going and it keeps going. So I say that to say uh, when people were comparing it to It Ain't Hard to Tell, it was real heavy handed and real abrasive. And unfortunately, um, a lot of times with music now, it's always in the, it's used to be competitive or to be, it's a very poverty, poverty thinking way of looking at things. Like only one person could be this and he's the king and he's the best of all times and he's originated and he's not. And it's like, yo, the universe is vast. And electricity, it's flowing all around us. And it's, a, it's, it's open for any of us to use it if we allow ourselves to be a conduit for it. Yeah. So I say that to say, like, I appreciate the um, comparisons to It Ain't Hard to Tell, but it was not biting. It, it ain't hard to tell. I wasn't even thinking about it. Yeah. I was yeah. not biting human nature. I wasn't even thinking about it. Yo, I'm not approaching this from a hip hop standpoint. I'm not approaching this trying to battle or be better than the next producer. I'm not a surgeon like I'm the best surgeon and look at my portion. I'm like, no, I'm made to be this great surgeon so I can provide this pristine service to humanity or the universe. To me, it feels like you caught something by the tail and you <laughs> followed it you followed it to where it was going and yeah uh no i i literally went on a tangent it started earlier that day and i didn't stop until the end of the day mm. and that's why it's going through all these different changes and meta it's going through this metamorphosis I, i'm an audience member to this too like even though i'm pressing the buttons like, like i i truly make music for selfish reasons there was nothing out there that was I could turn on that sounded like this. 
Uh huh. It, you know, it's, there's no way, there's no restaurant I could go to that that's making food like this. So I prepared this dish. You know, creativity is discovery as well. I mean, right. so, I mean, I would love to hear some of the, the synths and the pads and kind of like get a sense of how the song builds up. Uh, Let's explore me, these. Let, what did you say <laughs> earlier? You were going to, you, when you solo something, you get to, you get to go shopping in, the, in your own living room? Yeah. Going through all of these uh, sounds is like shopping in your own. It's like going, like, oh, let's go clean the basement or let's go clean our attic. Uh-huh. And you get in there like, oh, man, I'm going to wear this. <laughs> or, or, shit, I, what, I, I'm bringing this back out. It's like, uh-huh. wow. That, you know, and, and also... You, you not you don't wear it in the same way that you wore it. You wear it in a different way, or you wear it in conjunction with how your style is where you are now. So meaning like when I'm going through these tracks and I'm listening to it, I'm having a, a, a newfound listening and a, a deeper appreciation and intimate relationship with each track that we're soloing. It really is a. It was really about like this space that I saw, and a lot of times it wasn't about deliberate melody lines. It was just about ah, like space. Uh huh. And um, I created some melodies, but then in in conjunction with those melodies, I added like pads to bring emotion, if not power. Um, to those melodies, and one of the one of the yeah. So whether it was like the harp strings, or whether it is the kind of divine kind of gothic voices that come in every now and again that rise up, it it helped to bring uh, a certain level of all all oddness to it or uh otherworldliness to it let's go to the this, this i know i talked about pads and melodies but for some reason i want to go to the one note Let me all see. right let's go to the one note the one note is funny because it's throughout the whole song mostly and it's just it's just following here we go and this thing alone makes me want to create music Makes me want to do a whole new version of this song, just by itself. And it's that simple. So we talk about that. Um, and we can get into this, the rows. This is going through the site comes in in second verse, I think. Maybe the first two. This is very simple. Then it changes. It's a little bit more trippy. Get back. I'm gonna get to the mute. So it's like, <laughs> you know, I'm funny because the reason I'm laughing is because the you know the 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 uh, the notes actually say words. It's like those 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 notes are saying I'm here. Uh huh. Here I'm here here I'm here I'm here not there. <laughs> But here, <laughs> like that's what I'm. That's so I laugh. I'm 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 crazy like that. I hear stuff like that. So, um, and then we could get into the high flash chords, which is like an accent. It's a dance. It's a Nicholas Brothers dance. The uh, the the famous <laughs> tap dancers you're talking about. Yeah, the tap dancers. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like 
You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, they were so, man, those guys. But it's, you know, it's, it's you skating. You the skate. slides and the slides splits. and skips and, mm-hmm. and. Now, let me ask you, because people don't know how you're doing this. You're not doing this is not a soft synth in Ableton Live. No. 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 Not nothing against that because I think those people that do oh, that yeah. are geniuses. I think anybody like I have that's the that's the other thing I want to say, even though I come from an analog and NPC world, I embrace technology and I love the marriage of the two. Mm-hmm. But I also can like I'm you know I'm also learning how to just deal with technology on its own like you know working on music in the hotel room you know or on an airplane yeah uh, but no I'm not doing this with it's not a manipulation or a plug-in or soft synth it's, uh, I'm playing these um, these instruments from a keyboard and I'm just utilizing the knobs that's on the keyboard. <laughs> Yeah, in a way that you know one might deal with outboard gear or plugins or whatever in your DAW. So we're talking about a low pass filter, a high pass filter. Yeah. Now, when you say that you're hearing words, mm-hmm. and you're also seeing like the the visual of the Nicholas Brothers, that's that's beautiful because I can see them in their suits uh dancing uh do you get a visual picture of the whole song as you build up the layers or is it kind of like a flash of something comes and you just follow the inspiration and keep moving both 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 there's a lot of going on there's a lot of ideas within the one song of visually there's a lot of ideas and then there's a holistic thing Mm-hmm. that I have in my mind that I'm seeing um, that sometimes that's where the work comes in, figuring out how to articulate what's in my mind to somebody that I would want to assist me to um, express that visually. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the Nicholas Brothers, I literally just thought about. Hearing it like that, I literally just thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's like the Nicholas Brothers. Um, <laughs> this is a great way to describe music, I think. You know, uh, thinking about them, yeah. But uh, yeah, and I, lo- I, I yeah. love that. I love that. There's something about. So, I feel as though something in this song is also about you being more comfortable than you've been in your own skin previously in your life. Do it properly. Do it properly. And how do you do it properly? So the old do it properly is being super hard on yourself, super analytical, super critical, self editing, doubting before you even make a mark. Mm -hmm. And you're perfect but you're not free. This is me saying, Zeus says at the top of the song, let's get to that. Let's get to that. Because I want to, I want to address what you just said wholeheartedly. Mm. Have you forgotten that once we were brought here, we were robbed of our name, robbed of our language. We lost our religion, our culture, our God. And many of us, by the way, we have even lost our mind. So, the dude says, have you forgotten that once you were brought here, you were robbed of your name, robbed of your language, you lost your religion, your culture, your God. And many of us, by the way, we act, we even lost our mind. That's the goal. Before, that was a bad thing. When it was first presented, that was a bad thing, because it was a bad thing. So yeah, I, you saying that you thank you, therapist. You uh, I'm I'm talking to myself talking these things. They're like I'm talking about to myself. I'm not. This is not me pointing at people. Like you need to do it properly. <laughs> <laughs> right. Nah. See. Nah. This is me. I'm going through the changes. I'm the. One, I'm dealing with me. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. Mm-hmm. 
And like Malcolm X, or Malcolm Little, Malcolm X, El Hashbaz, like Forrest Gump, like Dorothy, pick one, The Wizard of Oz or The Wiz, you can follow my journey. And if you pay attention, maybe you will be transformed as I am transformed. Mm -hmm. So the, the album, The Clearing, mm -hmm. is about clearing things that block, about clearing negative uh, emotions. About clearing positive too, because sometimes the positive is the negative. Uh, <laughs> that, that trophy you got for whatever, being a host of this isolated tracks you got <laughs> in 2018, you walking around, you come in the room like, yeah, I, you know, it's like, no, let that shit go. Throw that shit away. Clearing out ego, maybe. The ego. Yeah. I'm not saying don't be selfish. That people get ego and selfish mixed up. Selfish mm -hmm. is actually being some of the most generous thing you could do. How so? Being selfish some of the most, it's the most generous thing you could do. Because you alleviate yourself of being the burden of others. Ah. Uh. And you also put yourself, yourself up to assist others, other people. Mm -hmm. You think you're helping me by giving me this money. You think you're helping me by, you know, oh, no, you're actually enabling me and you're keeping me in the state. Yeah. So the clearing is the removal, is the, it's not even making wrong the past or the future. It's just saying, eh, it is out of the way. So I have space to work and create from this point forward. Mm -hmm. And also it allows for you to see me. Like it allows for you to, you know, you can see me, take all of this, I get to see me. Yeah. So <laughs> that's what's up. That's what, that's what this is about. So I want to bring attention to these. So it's funny. <laughs> I was talking about the Nicholas Brothers. As a joke, I named these the Fosse Claps. <laughs> Bob Fosse. Well, that's you. You just pass. You just pass. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. So these claps, although they're percussive, they're very emotional. They got a lot of emotion in them. So I go four on the floor because it's the outro. And I just thought, I want to dance, really dance. Well, thank you for that. I, uh, I just have, I have a lot of respect for uh, you and the time that you have put in for Chicago for these multiple art forms, dance music, hip hop, and this in between new thing that you are making. Oh, thanks. And uh, so it's nice to sort of hear some of the stories. I mean, and one of the great things about this time, despite the fact that we're all kind of in our bubbles, is that. Um, we get to talk to people like you a little bit more because <laughs> you're not out there doing something <laughs> so I can catch you uh, right. at home. Right. Uh, so I really appreciate this. And uh, I highly recommend to anyone that's watching this that you go and check out the whole record because it, it matters actually that you listen to the whole thing. Sometimes I say, go listen to a song. But in this case, I think it matters that you listen to the whole thing. And uh, I just want to say thank you for uh, spending the time with us this afternoon. Man, thank you. I, I want to close with one more sound. Yeah. That sound is my sonic ID, my sonic identification. And you asked, you asked one of the uh, a really um, pertinent question, a really... Um, 
on time question, um, lack of a better term, uh, when you said, yeah, it seems like you're letting go of things. And that's what my sonic idea is. That's what my, they call them tags. That's what my tag is. It's, it's me excelling. A lot of people think it's just a cool, <laughs> exactly. They think it's a, a cool, you know, just something, oh, it's cool, you know what I mean? Like somebody, like, but no, it's um, me letting go. <laughs> nice. So I would like to end on that note. <laughs> I think that's a fantastic place to call it. Special thanks to Russell Pike Jr. for audio engineering and editing in Chicago. And of course, to our guest, the inimitable Twilight Tone. Don't forget to check the link below to listen to the released version of Do It Properly from the record, The Clearing, out on Stone's Throw Records. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.